have been elected to the St. Louis County Board, and they will also join us in studio. And we'll have the week's business headlines and a news file story from 25 years ago. So stay with us. Almanac North is next. Hello and welcome to Almanac North. Thank you very much for watching. Our show was recorded this week on Wednesday afternoon. And now here's Julie with our first guest. All right, thanks Denny and welcome everyone. Minnesota's state legislature will look a bit different when the next session begins in January. Riding a wave of success across the country, the state Senate was flipped to a Republican majority following the election and Republicans retained control of the House as well. We have three newly elected House members with us today. Liz Olson is a Democrat from Duluth who won in House District 7B. Sandy Lehman is a Republican from Cohasset who won the Minnesota House District 5B seat. And Julie Sandsteed is a DFLer from Hibbing who will represent House District 6A. And thanks to all of you for being here and congratulations on the election. Thank you. Thank you. Sandy, you had a rather convincing win over your Democratic in incumbent. Uh, were you, s did you see the signs that this was coming? Well, Julie, I did. Mm -hmm. And um, people asked me initially when I announced um, what caused me to, to run at this, at this time. And it really was that I saw the timing was right. Um, there was definitely a mood for change. And um, <coughs> as I looked at the district, District 5B, takes in a big chunk of Itasca County and a swath through Cass County with the major population centered around Grand Rapids, Cohasset, which is my hometown. Uh, and I lived in, lived in the area for 39 years. So um, I knew my community, I'd been listening to the community and there was concern mm -hmm. about the direction of the region and the direction of the state. So Sandy, what kind of a campaign did you run? Did you do a lot of door knocking? What did you do? We did everything, Denny. <laughs> we did everything. I think I knocked on 6,000 doors. Uh, lots of volunteer uh, help in that effort, but um, it sounds sort of old fashioned, you know, knocking on people's doors and it, it doesn't happen very often otherwise, but it still is the best way to read the temperature and to, to hear from people. Mm -hmm. So we, we use social media, we use direct mail, we used radio, print media and, and direct mail, um, but every day we door knocked. Mm -hmm. Liz, Duluth stayed pretty solidly Democratic in the, in the election. Um, other rural areas were a little bit more mixed. Do you think that there's a, a disconnect between the, the metropolitan urban areas and the, the rural areas in our region like seems to be reflected across the country? I think, you know, that that's a narrative that's out there. Mm -hmm. I grew up in more rural parts of Minnesota, so I feel a tie to those pieces of our community, and I think it's often used to divide us, to say that we maybe don't stand for the same things or that we're becoming more divided, but I think that there's still things that across our communities and across Minnesota we can all agree on. I heard it in my district a lot about, you know, families just want to be able to not just survive but to thrive. They need the resources, the jobs, the incomes, the supports to be able to do that. And I think that's true across all of Minnesota. And I think we need to find our commonalities in order to really work towards what unites us in making those kinds of things happen. And mm -hmm. Julie, what were the people of District 6A telling you when you were running? What did they want to see done? Um, well, jobs. Jobs are a big concern up in the Iron Range. But actually, I heard a lot that the DFL is going too far to the left. So they were looking for more of a moderate, I think. and. Um, I think that's probably what contributed to some of what we saw with the sweep of the Republicans. Mm -hmm. Julie, what are the issues that you really hope to address in your first session? Education is really my passion. Mm -hmm. So whether it's talking about funding or testing or there's a whole variety of education, but jobs are a big um, concern up on the Iron Range, like I said. So um, finding jobs, diversifying the economy, 
So it isn't just the big industry, but it can be, you know, small town, community jobs, that type of thing. We have a skilled workforce, and it would be great to put them to work. Mm -hmm. Now, you've been, Sandy, deeply involved in public life for a long time. Are you finding people in northeastern Minnesota are becoming more of a 50-50 split, 50% Democrat, 50% Republican? What's the change? What's causing the change? Well, uh, Denny, that's an excellent question, and that's another reason I ran, um, is, is I've served in public life, um, but mostly in private life, um, serving as Chamber of Commerce president that's and right. economic development, so on. Eight years in the Plenty administration, but never as an elected official. So I think people haven't seen me as particularly partisan. And what I found uh, is that people are becoming, especially in Itasca County, more and more independent. Um, so oftentimes I would speak to people at the door and they would say, you know, I used to always vote DFL or, you know, I always voted Republican, but now I'm voting for the person. And I think that group of swing voters, that group of independent thinkers is growing. Is this going to last? I think it is. Um, I hope it does. Um, I, I like the idea that people are paying attention to who's running rather than just checking mm -hmm. a box under the party. Um, I think that holds us accountable to our constituents that we really need to be serving them rather than one particular mm -hmm. party. Let's talk uh, a little bit about the upcoming session. Of course, the bonding bill was not passed the last session. Um, Liz, do you think that um, that should be passed pretty quickly or, or a bonding bill of some size should be passed pretty quickly? Definitely. I mean, that's mm -hmm. the work of the legislature is to do the work th that's in front of us. And because that didn't happen last session, that's work on our plate this session. I definitely think we need to move that. Duluth had a number of really critical projects in there um, that we need to make sure we pass a bonding bill and we do so in a way that really benefits what we need here in Duluth. Mm -hmm. Does it change the approach to the bonding bill now that uh, you will be in the minority? I mean, I still think we need to advocate mm -hmm. for the projects our region needs, and that really should be something that we can come around and decide on. And I mean, being in the minority doesn't mean that we're, we still don't need to do the work of the Bonnie Bill, and we need to come together around that and really look at these critical projects. Sure. So I'm hopeful that we can still come together and get this done. And Julie, mm -hmm. if I could just say, the Bonnie Bill was a bill that was supported by 89% of the legislature. Mm -hmm. So that was a bill where people did come together, and we mm -hmm. should certainly be able to do so again. It's unfortunate that it wasn't passed you know some last minute yeah. uh, gyrations in the, in the House and the Senate but I have every hope that we can continue to have some bipartisan yeah. effort. In Liz you're, you're becoming this uh, you're replacing Eric Simonson who's just becoming our state senator mm -hmm. um, in, in taking over his position that he held in the House what else do we need in your district other than the bonding bill what else is needed? Well, that's a great question. So uh, I also knocked a lot of doors, talked to a lot of people directly about issues that were of concern to them, and was able to win with a majority that was far more than just who typically votes DFL. So it was things that resonated sure. with people on both sides of the aisle, and they're things I'm hopeful we can do, even with uh, you know being in the minority of DFL. And it's really things about people's livelihood. I knocked on a lot of families' doors that were concerned about early childhood education and making sure we've seen some really great things happen in Duluth because of what the state has funded and we can continue to expand and build on that. Um, there are policies that you know I'm hopeful we can still look into that help families get by that really need you know child care is just outrageously expensive and there's a lot of working families in our district that really could benefit from how we how we continue to make child care more affordable so there's things like that and other policies but it's really about sort of those bread and butter issues that really you know a lot of folks in West Duluth really need in order to survive. Mm -hmm. Minshore of course was one of the the big issues in the election with the the high premiums coming out uh, the news of the high premiums coming out shortly before the election. Julie, what do you think needs to be done in terms of reform to kind of make health care accessible and affordable to people? In the short term, I think we have to come up with a solution mm -hmm. to help the people that are being affected immediately. But in the long term, I think we really need to look at health care overall. Um, we need to assess why the rates are as high <coughs> as they are. Is it just usage? And, and you know, I know there's been talk of single, um, single payer plans. And at this point, I think we should at least be studying how that would impact Minnesotans and what we could do with it. Um, but it's a problem that's been going on longer than just Minsher or the ACA. It's been a growing problem for a number of years. And I think it's just kind of hit its pinnacle right now. So we really need to take a look at it and find a solution, a long-term Sa solution. Sandy, what do you hear from the business community in the Grand Rapids area when it comes to health care? 
Well, it's um, the, the group that's being hit right now are the people who are trying to buy insurance on the individual private market. And those people tend to be the small business owners and the entrepreneurs and the self-employed. And Julie, I, I can't um, overstate the, the urgency of that situation. Uh, people emailed me, called me, people at the door talked. People who sell insurance uh, were concerned because they were having to leave the market mm -hmm. because they couldn't provide insurance any longer in Minnesota. So um, I, I agree with what Julie just said about the cost structure overall, um, the, the price uh, needs to be addressed. But in the short term, we need to provide relief mm -hmm. to those individuals that are facing three, four thousand dollar a month premiums with, with really high caps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Julie, what does your part of the state desperately need? If you can go down to St. Paul <laughs> and say, I want to get this for the people of my district, what do you need? Jobs. <laughs> we really need to diversify our, in, um, our industry and our How can economy. you do that? I think I've been a proponent of PolyMet, and I'm hopeful that PolyMet will move forward. Um, I see that being another opportunity just in and of itself with jobs, but I think it opens the door to other types of spin-off industry, green energies, things like that. And again, <coughs> excuse me, it isn't just um, the smokestack chasing yeah. type of industry. I really think we need to be um, open-minded about smaller industries, small businesses. We need to, one of the other things that my area needs is a revitalization. Um, of the communities, the small communities, so they appeal to younger families mm -hmm. and um, hopefully would be a draw. For How do you think the governor is going to get along with this legislature? I think they're going to love us. <laughs> 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 I, I honestly, um, I don't know. I think okay. I, th I think it's going to be a challenge in some ways, but I, I think we've got a lot of young people, a lot yeah. of eager people that are fresh and um, they're ready to work. And I, what I've been hearing across the board is people want to work in a bipartisan fashion. Okay. So I'm, I'm hopeful that we'll be able to do that. Sandy, we'll you chuckled at that now. question. <laughs> well, I'm encouraged by the two women on either side yeah. of me that we are going to be able to collaborate and work in a bipartisan fashion. But I think particularly this election was a wake up call to Governor Dayton. I sure hope so. Um, governor Dayton is not a popular governor in northern Minnesota. Why was he reelected? Well, he, did, jobs he wasn't was the big running. Issue he up. wasn't running this year. If he no, no, no. I realize that, yeah. but he, he served terms. Yeah, if he was running this year, he would have lost. Um, uh, he has he has inserted himself in in mining issues. Uh, I think he has sent sort of a chilling factor on on businesses who are looking to invest in the area, and um, they're full. You know, he's fully accountable. He and the DFL majority for the the start of Minshore. And he himself had to admit that it's a failure. So I think that the fact that there's a, a Republican-controlled House and Senate should be a wake-up call that Governor Dayton needs to work with this legislature. All right. Well, ladies, thank you very much for coming in. Good luck as you head into your first session. And uh, thank you. Thank, thank, you. you, for, for thank you all for running. All the best. Thank Thanks you. for being thank here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, let's dig into our News File archive for a look at what was making news 25 years ago this week. Today's mini snowstorm, as opposed to the mega storm of a few weeks ago, had a different effect on Northlanders. Tom and Diane Paradise were pretty cheerful as they cleared paths for their afternoon errands. Oh, I like this. This is my time of year. It's not real cold. I like the snow. Fun to play in. Makes work tough sometimes, but that's okay never know what it's going to turn out to be, so I just put my snowmobile suit on and truck on down. <laughs> There's a few reasons why people were generally upbeat during what could have been a trying and tedious afternoon. First, it's almost Thanksgiving. A little snow helps the holiday mood. And then there's the fact that since the megastorm, people are more prepared to handle the weather. And there's the belief that nothing could be as bad as that three feet of you-know-what that's already visited the Northland. Knock on wood. Hey, Dale. How's it going, Manly? Oh, not too bad. This is nice, huh, Dale? <laughs> <laughs> Good. Where's your shovel? You better take it along. <laughs> right. A lot of laughter and smiling out here today. And why not? Certainly was beautiful. This is perfect winter weather. Couldn't get any better.
As we know, St. Louis County is large and diverse with mines and timberlands to the north and the bustling port city to the south. The 200,000 people who call the county home are governed by a seven-person board of commissioners. Voters in the county elected two new members to the board last week and they join us now here in studio. Mike Jugovich is the current mayor of Chisholm who will represent the county's 7th district. And Beth Olson is executive director of First Witness in Duluth and will represent the county's 3rd district. Thanks to both of you for being here tonight. Thanks um, for having us. Mike, uh, what does your district need desperately from the St. Louis County Board? There's a number of things, but I'd say priority-wise, we're looking at roads and bridges. Obviously, there's there's a number of problems uh, with social services. I mean, there's a there's a drug problem mm -hmm. that we really need to address, and we want to make sure our seniors and veterans are taken care of. And then the third thing I would go along with is is public safety, sure. uh, especially with some of the things that are going on with drugs. Uh, it's great to have our people that are in place working, but we need to do whatever we can to make them more effective. I want to address this right off the top. You're the mayor of Chisholm. You have to resign that post. Tell us about that. I do. I will be resigning shortly after the first of the year. I'd imagine on the second. Uh, there's a county board meeting on the third, so I'm looking at being sworn in uh, that evening on the second. Sure. So I'll be able to join in the festivities on the third. Mm -hmm. Beth, uh, a similar question to you. Specific uh, West Duluth issues that you think need to really be uh, elevated at the county level? I think the biggest thing um, that I heard on the west side of Duluth was that they just don't feel like they get the same kind of attention that the rest of the city gets and believe that you know they want to see more business there, they want to see more revitalization in that part of town and want to feel like they have a really strong voice and someone who's going to help bring elevate that part of our community up and so um, I take that very seriously and that was uh, marching orders for me <laughs> and um, I, will, I will do everything I can to make sure that that happens. Mm -hmm. Are there mm -hmm. specific issues that you really want to tackle as a commissioner? There are many. Um, I talk to so many grandparents caring for their children and struggling with our social service system to get what they needed um, just due to social workers having huge caseloads, um, there being kind of extra paperwork, extra barriers and court processes and just needing much more assistance and needing much more social service help to be able to take care of children that have kind of come back into their lives that they weren't expecting and so um, I think that is a, just a our big issue that we need to tackle as a county board is how are we going to support our public health and human services to be able to do really good work on behalf of our kids and our families. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mike, you're, you're replacing Steve Rocker who chose not to seek re-election. What are the people of your district telling you? What did they say to you while you were campaigning? When we were out door knocking, we spent a lot of time talking with as many people as we could, whether it be parades or, or different events, and they all feel the same way. They want to be represented. I think that some of the outlying areas in District 7 uh, are looking to have a representative that's going to be there more often and spend the time that they feel is necessary. I think you, you hear that in different districts that they feel maybe they are being given the short end of the stick on that and I want to be the commissioner that's going to be the yeah. person that's going to be there and address their needs and their concerns with I'm a phone call away. So it's important to be, yeah. to be available. Certainly the, the southern part of St. Louis County with a higher population uh, gets more funding. Do uh, you, you expect some difficulty in trying to get more monies to the northern? I think we work together. We're, we're stronger together than we are apart. So, you know, you've all heard about dividing the county. I think our main purpose is working together and making St. Louis County better for everyone. So I think we can do that. Uh, I know uh, in the short time I've known Beth, I've, I've enjoyed it very much, and I look forward to working with her and everybody else on the board. Mm -hmm. Beth, this has been an all-male board for the last <laughs> four years or so. Uh, what do you think a, a woman's voice brings to the table and how important is it to have uh, a diversity of perspectives on that board? Well I think just our you know just growing up in this world and interacting in this world through work and other ways roles that we have in our families there are differences between women and men and it's good mm -hmm. to have both both voices yeah. at the table and um, you know a, a wide variety of people that people feel comfortable bringing their issues to and talking to and I mean I'll certainly be there for my district but I hope to be there for the entire county. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You mentioned social services before as being a, a priority and of course working with First Witness, um, you're kind of connected in mm -hmm. with that nonprofit community. How will that experience maybe help you be a, a better commissioner? 
I think I really understand the systems mm -hmm. and how they operate. I understand how they get funded or don't get funded <laughs> in some cases. I understand how the rules and the regulations that people have to follow that the state has handed down. And so there's a lot of work that we can do too as county board members at the state level to advocate for our workers on the county level so that we have better policies and regulations for them to yeah. work in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask both of you this question. Mike, I can start with you. What does economic development mean to you as far as the county board is concerned? You know, I, I do believe economic development is more of a public, uh, uh, or excuse me, private uh, entity, but I do believe we play a part in it. I mean, mm -hmm. incentives and the ability to get out and land, uh, I think we can do a lot of great things if we partner up with some developers and it'll behoove all of St. Louis County, not just my district or best, all of us together mm -hmm. with any St. Louis County economic development done and I think we can do that. Beth, how about yourself? I think the county has a can have much more of a role in economic development. I mean, we are the biggest land managers in the state of Minnesota in St. Louis County, so we certainly have tax forfeited land that we can use um, to help support economic development as, as appropriate. And I think we're big on infrastructure. County does a lot with infrastructure, so we certainly can help businesses in that way too. And I think we need to be working with the cities and the school boards and making sure that um, we're working together, that we're making the right decisions with the land and the right decisions with the infrastructure so we're not duplicating services and just costing more money to everybody. Mm -hmm. Mike, mm -hmm. as mayor of Chisholm, you probably have worked with the county commission through the years. 16. Um, Ha, has that experience maybe um, shaped some ideas in, in terms of how the, the county board could work more effectively to support communities like Chisholm? Uh, without a doubt. I think you take mm -hmm. a look at things over my 10 years, 16 years, 6 as a uh, counselor and 10 as mayor. I, you learn some things that work and you also see some things that maybe necessarily don't work the way you'd like them to. And I think we can get together and air out the differences that we may have with the cities and mm -hmm. maybe uh, make it more cost effective or, or uh, effective as a whole for all St. Louis County, but these cities should be heard and it's important that we yeah. get their thoughts and feelings. Mm -hmm. Beth, what does St. Louis County need from state government? Um, they need to be heard. <laughs> um, we, you know, we really, they pass the legislation and we implement it. That's the role at the county level. And so we need a strong voice at when the state is making decisions because we're the ones who are going to see what it's actually going to look like when we try to deliver that service to people. And so that's that's what I think we need from the state is we need a, a strong voice there. And that is that is something I committed to working on right away mm -hmm. um, is making sure that we're getting together with legislators, legislators almost immediately to bring forth our needs and concerns. Same question, Mike. You've obviously worked with the state uh, many times as mayor. What do you need right away? Uh, I, I tell you what, I think one of the biggest things we need is is that state legislature to get together, work together, cross the aisle, mm -hmm. and get a bonding bill passed. Uh, St. Louis County was affected greatly by the inability to do that last session, so this is something we're counting on. I know we can do that. We've got good people in place that are going to be able to handle this and understand we expect them to work across the aisle to get the job done for not only Minnesota and St. Louis County, but for everyone that's involved, and that does go a long distance. I mean, it's, it's a great number of people that affects us, but statewide, it's huge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any budget areas that you think the county needs to be looking at more closely? I think they need to be making sure that we're getting all of our state reimbursements. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of state reimbursements we can get for services that we provide and we've lost out on millions of dollars in the last few years by not getting those state reimbursements and mm -hmm. so I think just more of a streamlining of our budget and making sure we're recovering all the money we can is, is, is a priority right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well you might. I couldn't agree more. I think it's important that we take care of these things and, and take a good look at them because, it, you know, when you do the projects, you want to make sure that we're, we have the ability to gain these mm -hmm. funds. And I think without that, it holds everything up. Do either of you hope to make uh, any major changes in the four years you have on the board? Major changes for the county? I, I my, personally, I would like to see the county and the residents be more interactive. I mm -hmm. think that's something that we need to do. Uh, they're very important. They put us here, and, and I work for the district of number seven, but I represent all of St. Louis mm -hmm. County along with it, but I will work for them and everyone involved, and their opinions matter to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why is county government so important? I know that the, the races uh, were so overshadowed this mm -hmm. year by the presidential race, and yet people need to pay attention to local government. Mm -hmm. Why? We impact every day, everyday life, and we impact you, we impact your family, and so 
when you need uh, Meals on Wheels uh, for your parent, the county is the one who oh. delivers it. When vets aren't getting their benefits, it's the county who helps figure that out. And so, I mean, at every turn, we're every decision yeah. we make affects your day-to-day -day life. And with that, we have to end the conversation. Beth, Mike, thank you so much. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Time now for the business headlines from our friends at Business North. This week, a federal bankruptcy judge in Delaware denied a request from the state of Minnesota to separate state mineral leases from SR Steel Minnesota. The state made the request in the bankruptcy proceedings, arguing that SR failed to live up to its contractual obligations. The Delaware judge gave the company until February to unveil a plan for completion of the half-built Nashwalk Taconite plant, as well as an avenue to pay off creditors. Earlier this year, state officials indicated a preference to reassign the state leases to Cliffs Natural Resources. SR owes Minnesota $66 million and another $49 million to contractors. A group of regional health care providers expressed concern Tuesday about being excluded from the Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Minnesota insurance network. Affected are more than 20 independent clinics represented by Integrity Health Network. Duluth-based Integrity has negotiated for 18 months with Minnesota's largest health insurer provider without reaching an agreement. In a brief statement, Blue Cross said it doesn't want to negotiate with a third party, but will meet with clinic representatives individually. Because Blue Cross covers about half the patients who visited the affected clinics, administrators say the loss of their business could force some facilities to close. Year-to-date iron ore shipments from American ports on the Great Lakes have risen slightly to 39.1 million tons, an increase of 1.5 percent. Meanwhile, grain shipments through the port of Duluth Superior increased this fall and are on track to outpace 2016 and the port's five-year average. October was a good month for the Port of Duluth. The Duluth Seaway Port Authority's $18 million dock redevelopment was completed. It nearly triples the Kluwer Public Marine Terminal's outdoor storage capacity and doubles its heavy lift cargo handling capabilities. For more on these and other stories, visit businessnorth.com. Now, if you have a comment on this week's show, pick up your telephone, dial 218-788-2849 to leave a message, or send an email to almanacnorth at wdsc.org. And remember, the WDSC website is a great place to get the latest program listings, updates on your favorite shows, and news about coming station events. And Julie, this is our last show for a couple of weeks. We are off next week because of Thanksgiving, and the following week, of course, we have the WDSC membership drive. And, of course, we are counting on all of our Almanac North viewers to support the station during that membership. Drive. Absolutely. Hope you have a great Thanksgiving and all the thank folks you. out there as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. So join us for our next show on Friday, December the 9th. For Julie and the team at Almanac North, I'm Dennis Anderson. Have a great weekend. Good night, everybody, and be kind. Broadcast of Almanac North is made possible by viewers like you and by the law firm of Freiberger, Buchanan, Smith & Frederick, offering strength in numbers with individual support. Offices in Duluth, Superior, and St. Paul. Online at Freiberger.com. The Northland Foundation, nurturing children and youth across the generations, helping local businesses thrive, 
and supporting social justice and prosperity in the Arrowhead region for 30 years. The Iron Mining Association of Minnesota, mining the ore that makes the steel that makes the things you use every day. Imagine life without iron. More online at minnesotairon.org. Minnesota Power. We value clean air and water while delivering safe, reliable, and affordable electricity that enhances your comfort, security, and quality of life. The Teberg Fund, a publicly traded mutual fund managed by Duluth investment professional Curtis A. Teberg. More information about the fund is available at tbergfund.com. And the Muriel Whiteside Charitable Trust. You're watching WDSC WRPT, broadcasting from the campus of the University of Minnesota Duluth. Funding for Washington Week is provided by 